billing, billing. Uptown Murph. Tom Billing, Billing. Yo, fam, there's no way you're not completely impressed by our guy. This is how we do. This is how we do. My man Howie Roseman has completely exceeded expectations in my book. Now, keep this in mind. I understand how life works. When somebody puts their feet on your neck, when they hold your feet to the fire, like I believe uh, the Eagles brass is doing both Howie Roseman and Coach Sirianni, yeah, shit going to change. No doubt about that. Your man Howie Roseman going outside of himself. Imagine this right here. Being that guy that was complaining on that Saquon Barkley video about the Eagles not addressing the defense, and look how it's turned out just a few days later. I mean, you go out and get Bryce Huff, right? We know he's going to have a major impact, no doubt about that. Uh, hopefully, he's teamed up uh, with my man Haas Reddick, and that would just be something. Oh, mm, my God. Ah, that would be beautiful, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to hold my breath on that, right? Then you go out and get Chauncey Gardner? You bring C.J. Gardner-Johnson back to add to that secondary and supplementing a guy like Zach Bond, right? Not too many people know about Zach Bond, but that dude was the truth at Wisconsin. Uh, he just happened to go to a team that probably didn't have a, much of a plan for him, being as though he's a natural 3-4 outside linebacker. And as a 3-4 inside linebacker, yeah, he ain't playing over Demario Davis and Pete Werner for the New Orleans Saints. It is what it is on that. But you come out here, he can add depth at both positions, uh, a guy that can show himself very worthy of getting to the quarterback, just a natural pass rusher. But then you talk that off with going to get Devin White? What? How, Sway? Howie Roseman, Sway, that's how. What are we doing out here, man? Devin White, one of my favorite linebackers, period, point blank. Uh, man, I, I love my time back in the day covering college and high school football because I got to be around a lot of these guys uh, that are being prevalent in the NFL right now, especially a lot of the guys uh, back in the South. Devin White is a guy I got to be around when he was in high school coming in uh, to LSU, and I thought that he was just a next-level uh, new-age linebacker, right? One of these guys, right? Much like N'Kobe Dean, who I actually compared – uh, to Devin White, right? When I was doing my evals with him out of high school, I was like, damn. Uh, I think at the time, people thought he might actually go to LSU or um, you know, he's out of Mississippi. He was thinking about um, a, a rash of those schools. Ended up going to Georgia, of course. But I was like, man, they could end up getting another Devin White in the Kobe Dean. Very similarly sized, uh, but Devin White, <laughs> just a more explosive athlete than the Kobe Dean. Uh, but the Kobe Dean's mentals are just off the chain. Devin White's too, right? They both have that mentality or whatever like that. That football intelligence, crazy. No doubt about that. But Devin White, one of the best athletes you'll see. Uh, both of those guys, former running backs. I have running back in their background. Uh, Devin White could have been a running back at LSU. So imagine that. Uh, dude has 4'4 four, four speed, 6'237 pounds. And he hits like thunder. A boy, a old boy be out there hitting like the water boy. He be laying people out. Uh, he's a physical presence that you need in that defense. And I was remarking that, shh, man, give you a one-year deal for a guy, even like Zach Cunningham, and I will be straight because you go and get N'Kobe Dean, and this is before the draft. You still have a chance to go out and get all of those cats in the draft, whether it be Edge Cooper, uh, Jeremiah Trotter, um, guys like that, right? You know what I'm saying? My man over there at Mich Michigan, Junior Colson, guys like that. So, uh, keep that on the back burner, right? You can have N'Kobe Dean. Uh, you can have uh, your boy Devin White. And then you can have maybe Trotter and the damn Edrick Cooper all on the same team, right? Um, Got to give props to Ben Van Sumeren as well, right? Ben Van Sumeren, your man right there probably is going to make his mark as well. So maybe they don't get two linebackers in the draft. We have to factor him in as well. So, man. But look at this, man. Your boy Devin White. A lot of the time, linebacker play is about eye discipline. They will work the cheese on you, right? They will give you a lot of things to think about just to have you take a couple of false steps. Devin White, not that dude. Check that out right there. Trying to bring TJ Hawkinson out the backside, Splocketire. 
fertilize that man. <laughs> something serious, right? Every time he comes, it doesn't matter. If he hits you, you are going down something serious. They start off right here, right? With the with the detached lineman, right? Kind of flexed off, right? The, I'm sorry, the attached tight end here. Kind of flexed off. Hoping Devin White will follow him inside like it could be some type of inside zone, or right? But what does he do? Look at him. He's already playing it. Look at his eyes, right? Seeing right through that gap here before Kirk, he's, Kirk Cousins even completes the play action, he's already on it. Look at him. Hawkins is coming out the backside, gets him a, what, a two, three-yard loss on that shit. Man, run that again. That's that intelligence. Didn't take – he took zero false steps. He slid, He shuffled inside just in case and already had to play peg, man. Nasty. Now, listen, people are going to come in here, right, because it didn't end well for him in Tampa, right? He had some injuries. He was worried about his contract and all that. It didn't end well. So people are going to try to poo-poo. Like, at one particular point in time, people weren't saying he was the very best in the league. He made all pro. He destroyed it. I think it was the 2020 season. He had some crazy-ass games. I remember a game against the, the Saints. It felt like he just took over the entire game. I'm talking about, and he can do it all, right? Uh, sometimes his coverage is a little iffy, but that's where everybody who's a linebacker off ball these days. It's just too crazy on the inside with some of the schemes there, but uh, it's not from a lack of talent because he's one of the most talented linebackers in football, period. Inside shoulder force. Look at the patience. Look at the patience. On, then strike. Not getting too far over his skis, right, so to speak here. If you see a play being strong like this, a lot of people will jump way outside the gap. You see him slow playing it, slow playing it. You know why? It's inside shoulder force. He wants the back to work back towards traffic. There's going to be traffic for him for Levante David, his running mate right here, because he's working play side, working strong side right there. At the very least, he wants to make sure he collapses a few bodies to where Levante David can work, right? Those guys work very well in tandem, or they have at least in the past, right? Before shit we kind of went downhill this year. But you can see right here, he does encounter a body, but it doesn't matter. He's too quick to the draw, runs through an arm block, right? You ain't going to block Devin White with no arm block right there. And then he's the one to take presence in that gap. Let's get it, baby. Tackles at or around the line of scrimmage. I think that's what Devin White specializes in, right? Out of these linebackers, they're making tackles eight, nine, ten yards down the field. It's a tackle, right? You did save a touchdown, if you want to look at it that way, right? But it's not as impactful. Now, I want you to look at this right here. Obviously, ultimately, it's a called play. You can see the explosiveness of Devin White here. But look how it opens up for him. And how are you going to get away from that? Look at that. He splatter whacked C.J. Stroud before C.J. Stroud could even know what's going on right here. All right, C.J. Stroud would have had to have pan through his progression something serious before getting Splock a tie out right there and sent to the upper room with Jesus, all right? And my man, Rodham Cowboy right there. Your boy's a serious horse fanatic. Uh, so you got to get used to that right there. I'm talking about some real country type stuff. I seen specials on him with uh, him like having like a horse farm and shit like that, so... Uh, he's a different type of cat, no doubt about that. But, uh, man, coming out of this, right, I don't know if they barely damn near got set up right there, but they had the perfect call right there. And I'm talking about a guy who, at one particular point in time, looked like the best blitz in linebacker. I think he had, he had like eight or nine sacks one season. I think it was that 2020 season where I was talking about that playoff game with the Saints there. Uh, you getting nine, ten sacks from your linebacker, off-ball linebacker, that's extraordinary. That's scary shit. Hopefully Vic Fangio uh, harkens back to those days with that dude and allows him to blitz because uh, he's his first step is just is crazy. He has legit kind of sprinter speed in a 237-pound frame. A sideline to sideline, him in the Kobe Dean. How are you going to deal with that? Uh, Devin White right here. Get a balanced formation, so... Wherever the play goes, he could be obviously a weak side defender or he could be to the close side of the formation, or really the strong side of the formation here, uh, depending on the run call right here. So it's going to his left, and you can see him sifting and searching right there. It's parallel at the moment. Of, ooh, nasty. Looks like he got the great Jason Kelsey, right? Much love to the great Jason Kelsey right here. Looks like he kind of grabbed his jersey a little bit. He was able to disengage from that, right, while keeping, look at that step coming up out of that disengagement from the jersey tug right there. 
kept that lateral step going, pursuing, knowing that he has these guys working for him right here, right? They have contained the edge. He's got the inside shoulder force. Cut it back. He's the against the grain player right now, right? Lane Johnson almost making a tackle as well there. Uh, but you can see it right there, keeping his assignment correctly, and he arrives with a force. Bang. My man. This guy is scary with his eye and overall discipline and the angles that he takes. Always taking a proper angle. Look at that. They tried to okie doke on him and look at who, damn, Rolling Dervish as well. Look at that right there. Look at the initial moment of this, right? Coming right here, it looking like they're trying to set up some type of lead tosser. The motion with it and everything looks like that, but it's a reverse, right? That's a dope ass play too. That's a very dope play. Fake pitch, come back side, reverse. Then you have a lead blocker when in a rocket motion man, and then the tackle himself turns out as well. But did it fool Devin White? Look at that. All that shit going on right there. He barely moved a step. Matter of fact, he beat the lineman to the play. Look at that. He beat the lineman to the play. Tunzel. And look at the play he takes, right? Tunzel going on a straight plane. He ducks inside of Tunzel and took the proper and took the proper angle right there to be able to get Tank Dell on the ground right here. You know Tank Dell can run too. Man, one more get on that one. Mmm. Come on, man. Come on. Woo. Another one of those West Coast play action boot drawings right here. Kirk booting out the backside here. Have the tight end on a block and then release. And he sniffs that out perfectly. He works with the flow, gets into his pedal, and then immediately comes. And of course, you know what he does uh, when he arrives, right? He's going to arrive with a bang, balls. Look at that right there. Tight end's like, I'm good, I'm good. Uh-oh, spike a tire. <laughs> you know it's a spike a tire when you get up and you're looking at the back of someone's license plate. <laughs> hey, he's looking at the back of his license plate trying to get his insurance. <laughs> Do you have State Farm or Geico, sir? That was a hit and run. Uh, no, that was Devin White on that ass. Pause. Check it out right there. Look at the diffs. Man, dude, look at many different things he did. Right? Hard flow. Immediately turns. Peels back. Was going to drop. Take away the shallow crosser. Or at the very least, the, the the shallow crosser that was coming underneath with Jefferson, he's going to be able to drive on that. But instead, he gave himself enough space to come down there and bang! <laughs> State farmed his ass, right? Come on, man. Look at this one right here. Look at the initial zone drop. Flipped his hips. Took away TJ Hawkinson, right, on his, on his dart route. And then was able to work sideline to sideline off of that. Come <laughs> on, man. Got a hitch by Hawkinson right there. He took that away. And then he was the first to arrive over there. But he arrived before Levante David. And Levante David was more play side right here. Kirk Cousin on the pool. Look at that. Zone drop. Flipped the hips. Was going to go, right? Was working back this way. Saw Hawkinson. Diverted. Back that way, right on the rebound here, and then continue back out on his path, right? Rolling. Absolutely rolling, rolling. Look at that. And of course, bang! Splock a tire. When he comes, he's bringing that thunder, man. That's exactly what we need, I believe, in Philadelphia. Uh, Zach Cunningham had a little bit of that right there. Uh, Morrow, not so much. Dean has that. So to have a Dean and a dude like Devin White both bringing that type of intensity man on the second level the patience to man your gap you'll see him pretty much stay here despite the fact that you get zone flow this way and they're working with one of those tight zones so a quick zone meant to go off the back side right here which is where he's going to be at had he worked with the cheese and took the cheese there uh, he would have been too far inside but just staying patient, right? When they switch the gap, stay patient and able to strike with Alexander Madison, fertilize him. Run it again. Look at that. You see him searching and shifting? As soon as he gets a beat on it, right there, stays in the same place so he can have that inside shoulder force. Madison already sees him and was like, shit. 
<laughs> Shit, somebody block him, please. Bang. Nope. Right here. Potential sweep. Nope. Throwback screen on the block on the least. Look who's right there. Come on. Him and Joe Tryon. But obviously he kept his assignment, right? You see the fullback in there? That's going to be his assignment no matter what. Fullback blocking on the blocking on the uh, pseudo in man on the line of scrimmage, blocking on the five technique right there, and then tries to peel back for one of them. But look who's right. He did the same exact thing the damn fullback did. Look at that. They both turned at the same time, plant, and look at him. And he's always in go mode, right? Meaning he's 50 50 up where he could flip his hips, cover some type of zone, or he can stick his foot in the ground and get forward. He's very polished in his technique as well. Look at this. Uh, now, I forgot about this. Y'all remember this. I broke it down when it happened, whatever, like that. Look like this was going to be a halfback choice route. Uh, Swift read the leverage and banged it to the inside, but Jalen Hurts read outside for some odd reason there and pretty much just threw it right, right to Devin White. I would like to have seen this play out. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. If you ask me right there, right, if we looked at it, if it was read initially, Devin White may have sat too far on the outside here. Um, not sure if he knew he had maybe inside help there, but I don't know. Maybe he, he has mind control. He has mind control over Jalen Hurts right there. He made Jalen Hurts think it was going to be an inside set from him, and he just threw it right to him. So, And we know he can get busy after the catch. The guy can run. So he bogged it down there, but... Hell of a pickup for Howie Roseman. Hell of a pickup for them birds, man. Listen, fly, Eagles, fly. Devin White as an Eagle is crazy. I don't, obviously, it's probably going to be a one-year rental. Uh, I, we still, I still don't think that he's going to pay top-notch for a, a linebacker. He probably would just rather have everybody on their rookie deals, uh, just like the running backs, and uh, let them go before he has to pay them money, but then go and rent other players for one and two years. I don't know. Sometimes, man, you got to run what you brung, and you have to develop your own homegrown grown talent. So, But, hey, that man knows what he's doing because he's Howie Roseman. We shall see how it plays out. But I'm excited for Devin White, uh, Chauncey, Zach Bond, Bryce Huff, and, of course, Saquon Barkley. Man, complete talent upgrades there, man. So let me know what you think about everything out there, baby. Shout-outs to Jersey, all my people out here in Jersey, man. Much love to everybody in the entire Jersey. Shouts Philly. Shouts Delaware. Elton, Maryland, of course. Oh. Top billing. Top billing. Uptown Murph. Top billing, billing. Top billing. Top billing.